guys, thanks so much for tuning in this week to This Georgia Clay. So as you can see, we have furniture, it's coming together, it's already completed. Um, this is our completed look and what we've decided to ultimately keep. I know last week's vlog, um, I was a little bit uh, taken back by the scale of our couch because it's set entirely way too low. Um, but we have gotten new um, legs, so you'll see that later on in this vlog and how it actually helped to increase the height of the couch, which I'm actually sitting on now. It's now the perfect height. Um, we've come to live with the couch now for about, I think it's been two weeks now or so, and we absolutely love it. Like, I don't think that we could have thought of any other couch in this space that actually works. Um, it just completes the, it completes the look, and I'm so happy with the overall feel of the space. So um, in this week's vlog, we built our first ever coffee table. Um, I wanted one from Crate and Barrel. You guys know I love Crate and Barrel. And you know, I said that like when we first started, like I love Crate and Barrel and like, I thought that I would have this whole house full of nothing but Crate and Barrel stuff, but it's expensive, okay? <laughs> and a lot of their stuff is um, back ordered and I just don't have the patience to wait for it. Some items, yes, we are gonna be getting for Crate and Barrel that um, actually our bedroom set, we're still deciding of what we actually want. I don't know if I wanna do a good dupe of the bed that I want or I actually want to spend the money and invest in the actual bed that I want for our room. I want our room to be our sanctuary, so I'm just torn with that. But anyhow, that's from Crate and Barrel. So you'll start to see some more Crate and Barrel items coming. Um, but with this table, it was $1,700, I believe. I loved it, but I didn't love the price, and so I talked to Matt and I was like, why don't we just make our own table? And so um, with my measuring, I'm pretty sure I'll include that. When I measure stuff, I just usually go like, I want it to be this long <laughs> by this long. And, or I'll like lay down or I'll stack buckets or it's just how I measure stuff, I don't know. And so I'll usually tell him like, this is what I want it to be. And then he'll go get the measuring tape and he's like, oh, that's perfect. So I don't know how it works out with the scale and how I measure things, it just comes out. So that's how we kind of go with it. Um, but for the table though, it was something that I went back and forth and guys, I actually bought a different stain for the table um, than what you'll see, but I tried to go with a natural color and I have this whole can of stain now that I didn't use because when I did it on a sample piece of wood and I let it sit for a while, I hated it. <laughs> I'm trying to get away from black and incorporate some more natural wood tones and things, which I have, but I just do that in other spaces in my home. It doesn't necessarily have to be my furniture, but I tend to incorporate the natural wood tones by decor pieces. And so since our built-in is a huge focal point in the home, that was really my place to be able to make it light, fresh, and bright. So that was something that we went with the, you know, I chose a natural wood stain rather than doing black shelves or just like a basic white shelf. Um, so with the coffee table, I was torn. Matt was like, just try it out, try it out, try it out. <laughs> I did, I tried it out, it didn't work. So we went with my standard go-to, truest black. So <laughs> you'll see that. Um, but with the coffee table, like I said, the inspiration was a Crate and Barrel inspired table that I absolutely loved. It was just the price point. I wasn't willing to spend $1,700 on a table that is not something that you sit at every day. It's not my kitchen table, it's not, um, like a table that I would use out on my deck or anything like that, that you know we would use in the summer because we are gonna plan on doing some patio furniture out there. So I want something that will stand the test of time. And sometimes, you know, when you spend a little bit more, you can get a better quality. Um, so, you know, it just wasn't something I was willing to invest in, something that's just going to sit there for purely decorative purposes. So we decided to go ahead and build our own. Um, we went over to Lowe's and got all the uh, stuff that we needed for it and, I hope that you guys enjoy this vlog to be able to see how an inspiration came to be this beautiful coffee table that I see before me. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. So we ended up taking a trip over to Lowe's and I knew that I wanted the table to be 60 by 48 inches. So we were able to find these project um, panel boards and they're a good alternative to make a tabletop. So we found these and they were 30 by 48 inches. So we purchased two because we knew we wanted to put them together to create the tabletop. So because we couldn't find any uh, clamps that were big enough, we purchased these pre-cut pipes with these pipe um, clamps to make the, the um, I guess the clamping mechanism to hold the two boards together while Matt put wood glue. Um, so this was a good option and a good alternative if you can't find clamps that are just quite big enough to make your own 
table. Um, this is good to use. Okay, so like we always say, make sure that you dry fit everything because once you stick it and screw it, you can't get it apart. So make sure that you dry fit. And um, uh, with this one, we would say when Matt was putting on the wood glue, it was entirely too much wood glue. Um, I wasn't down there to see what he was doing, but we know now not to do that. Um, but make sure that the side that you want to be the top um, is facing up and the one that you don't want to show and it may you know the wood glue might bleed through you know on the other side make sure that that's the bottom um this is our first time doing this project so we didn't know exactly how much we should use um, you see that drip right there um but like i said it's a lesson learned it's our first diy as far as making a true table that we're going to utilize from day to day um so this is something that i would say to refrain from make sure that the side facing you is your top and the side that you don't care how it looks on the opposite side because no one's going to see it is the one that has the glue all over it. Okay, so once we got the panels lined up as best we could, Matt wiped off some of that excess glue. And he also used some weights to get the other panel um, as level as possible so that way it can adhere overnight. Hey guys, I just wanted to jump in real quick. Uh, what you're gonna see me doing right here is like checking the the front and the bottom or the top and the bottom of the board against the, the teeth on the saw or the actual blade. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is because the, the board that we were working with, a two by 10 is so long. Um, it was kind of hard to make sure that it was straight up against the, the saw fence. So, you know, the best thing you can do is just check it 10, 20 times. And I'm, I'm like super paranoid when it comes to measurements. So I'm always uh, worried every something's going to be off. So I checked it with uh, against the tape on the tape measure, top and bottom 10, 15 times. I don't even know how many at this point. Uh, just to make sure that when I cut, it was as straight as it could possibly be. So we were able to get all four legs out of one board and they were all cut to 17 inches. So I kind of worked out. We had the two by 10 laying around in the, in the basement so we didn't have to buy an extra one. Um, and from there, it was time to move on to the next step. Okay, so for the legs, I wanted to um, I liked at first how they were further apart, but then when I was looking on the opposite side, I liked how close they were. So ultimately we decided to bring the legs closer in, so therefore it was a more uniform look throughout. Okay, so the original plan for the L brackets were just two per leg, but because someone wanted it to be super secured, um, we ultimately decided to. We decided to double down and do uh, double everything. So we went with four brackets on every leg instead of two. Uh, and then we secured everything down with one and a quarter construction screws. And uh, that was pretty much it.
Okay, so as we went along, we wanted to make sure that everything was nice and square. So we used that square to make sure that it was all straight. The last thing that you want is a little wobble in your tape. Okay, so by now you guys know that normally when we're doing a project and it requires building, Matt normally does all the building, but I want to start doing that too. So he let me, um, you know, put some of the screws in. It wasn't my finest moment, but I did all right. So speaking of super secure, we had some extra two by threes and one by twos just sitting around, but we knew that we wanted to be able to sit on the coffee table if that was the case. Don't sit on my coffee table, but if you need to, but don't. Um, we have this extra security here. So he was just putting the support beam going across and he added one to the top, one to the bottom, and then he secured the legs with an additional one by two on both sides. So this thing is really starting to look like a tank. It's really secure. It's looking good. You could actually see that it is a table. And um, yeah, it looks really good. So I'm very proud of Matt. He did a great job. So um, we're gonna go ahead and try and flip the table over. <laughs> and I pray that it's in one piece. I know it is. He did a good job putting it together. I uh, just came back from dropping my daughter off at work, so Matt put in the support uh, brackets for us. So let's go ahead and try it out. Slow. <laughs> Okay, so this is where I was referring to earlier as far as make sure that you're careful on how much glue that you use because we were trying to sand off the glue and wood glue is really hard once it's fined and, and it dries to get off. Um, so again, be careful with it, but we tried the best we could. We could have easily, you know, tried to get it off a lot better than what we ended up with um, if we would have just not been lazy, went back to Lowe's and got some stronger sandpaper, but I didn't feel like doing that. I had went to Lowe's a couple of times that day. So here we are. Okay, so usually I'm the one that finishes up all the final details as far as painting, staining, caulking, things of that nature. But this thing was a beast. It was huge. It was so much work. My arms were burning. Oh my gosh. 
Um, the more we got into the project, we actually started to use a stain brush. I forgot that I had purchased one and that actually worked out a whole lot better as far as applying the product. Um, I usually like the stain pads or sponges and they were good too, but they require a lot more work to like work it into the wood and the stain brush just allowed me to just paint it on. And I really liked how that finish came out more so than the scrubbing. So going forward, I will continue to use my stain brush. But um, yeah, guys, I tried to do a natural wood color for you guys, but your girl wasn't having it. True as black is what it is. you guys think about our completed look so far look at our table it's so beautiful i absolutely love it it came out way better than what we expected um this is just an arrangement that i made these are some dried flowers that i got from hobby lobby and some dried stems um and then also this is just some greenery that i actually had that was in the foyer and i put that in there and some baby's breath and this glass jar i got from target so yeah that's the whole look there. I still have some <laughs> tags on here. I'm one of those people that I, I leave the tags on until I'm like absolutely sure if I like something. So yeah, I've ordered already some coffee table and decor um, books and things like that. They should be here Tuesday or Wednesday of this week. So next week's video, we will go ahead and do a full completed look of this space. I still need to get some accent pillows from here just to tie in some other color, um, not other color, but I want some big black velvet pillows here. Um, so I'm trying to find some of those. I think it also needs a throw to like come over the couch as well. Um, if you guys are following me on Instagram, you would know that this is a fluted table that I made and I stained it black. And again, it's the truest black stain by Bayer. Um, but it is a table that I love and I made it kind of semi all on my own. I think Matt did a couple of cuts for me, but other than that, I did make it on my own. So you'll see that that's going to be another vlog that's coming soon and how I made it. And um, this was inspired by a table from McGee and Co. And it was on their page for, I believe it was 540 bucks. And I made mine for $140. So that was it. And it did take quite some time, but it was a labor of love and I absolutely love it. I'm looking for, I'm going to put a big oversized um, lamp on there, which is going to be a DIY. So stay tuned for that and styling of that. This um, poof we actually had, it used to be in my console in the front of our house and it has made a lot of different transitions in the home. It used to be over there by the fireplace. And now it's final spot will be here between these um, two chairs. It actually was something that Matt pointed out because it's kind of got the same coloring as the, um, the chairs as well. So it kind of just works. And then that way it doesn't obstruct any view or anything. So it's just an extra seat. If anyone wanted to sit there in the middle, they most certainly can. Don't sit on my poof though, but you could. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we have that. And then these chair, uh, excuse me, these pillows here, these accent pillows, I got them from Target as well. Um, so I got two that are just both the same for the chairs and they just have these tassels on them. And then I thought about on the couch, I got something that was very similar. And I got these as well from Target and they just have kind of like the same similar styling as the chairs here on the accent chairs. So yes, this is our completed space as of right now. Um, we are going to be getting a frame TV later on this month and that'll kind of wrap out this area here. 
I'm still looking for a cabinet that will go over on that wall, but we're not gonna span out because there's a mess right there. Um, right there, and we can give you a sneak peek of the kitchen. Move over, Leah. So I did get some new bar stools right here. I just wanted to show you guys, um, if you're familiar, that I used to have some bar stools that didn't have a back on them. I absolutely hate them. I don't like those type of bar stools. I think they're perfect for like a space in the rec room or a basement, you know, something fun, but not in a kitchen. I just, me personally, I don't like that. So these go more so with our style. They're actually the same as our dining room chairs as well. We are waiting on a table that we ordered that will be here March 10th. Um, we did a collaboration, so we have a new light picture that will go here. I can't wait to share that with you guys and you guys get some cool, um, deals on that so you'll get a percentage off as well so a lot of things are coming i can't wait to show this whole completed transition of the space from having absolutely nothing to what it is now and if matt just spans back out of it yeah we can share um what the new feet right did we show them that oh yeah no we didn't so yeah so we do have new feet or new legs on our couch here um we ordered these from lowe's and they're just standard black feet and they added four, excuse me, five inches to the couch, was, which was absolutely what we needed. It gives the correct height now. So when you're sitting on the couch, it just allows you to be at the same height as the accent chairs. Because before we were like really low and then someone sitting in the chair was like up here and the couch is down here. So it was really weird. Um, and then with the table height, I wanted a table that wasn't too high where you can just grab your drink but then also it wasn't too low when you're like setting it down kind of low. So I think the height was perfect. Um, what's the height on this, babe? The table? Uh, would it come out to 18, 19? Was it 18 and a half? I think, yeah, 18 I think and 18 a half. 18 and a half. Yeah, so it's 18 and a half inches. Um, the height of the couch now is now 20 inches. So it was a good distance or a good height for the table and couch to be. Yeah. Um, so that works out. And so now when you're sitting up and you're watching TV, you're at a good height. It looks like when you're sitting in the on the couch, we have to like lift your head up to look at the TV. And it's only because we asked for a raised fire box. So with the raised fire box, it actually raises the mantle. So everything gets higher. So the TV gets higher, the mantle gets higher. So it's always gonna be an issue regardless, unless you had like a couch that was like eight inches off the ground, which is just not doable. So um, I think it'll be all right. We'll have the frame TV where you can kind of tilt it. So if it's an issue with neck or anything like that, you can tilt it down and it'll just be at a pleasant viewing space. But for the most part, it's not really a space up here that's going to be used all that much. We still have the basement with the rec space that we are gonna be working on and getting a very nice um, sectional for down there as well. So we can kind of lounge and it won't be as formal as up here. But I also still wanted it to be where my kids can still sit because they do, they sit on the couch, they sit in the chairs, um, but they're older, you know. I don't know if, my kids were younger, would we have done something like this? Probably, probably yeah. not. <laughs> Most definitely I would have never gotten a white couch. I probably would have got a black couch. Something that was super dark. <laughs> so it wouldn't show dirt or anything. Um, I actually protected the couch and I sprayed it with Scotch Guard. So it's um, actually protected some from stains and repellent or anything like that. So it'll be fine. Um, and it wasn't a huge, huge investment. So if something you know were to happen to it, I can just replace it at a later point, so. But again, thank you guys so much for tuning in this week to This Georgia Clay. I'm absolutely in love with our space up here. It's finally coming together when I walk up the stairs from the basement after working all day and I see the space, it's absolutely gorgeous and I just love it. It's coming together slowly but surely. Um, so again, please like, subscribe, share it with a friend and comment below. See you guys next week. Bye guys.